Released for the Nintendo Switch worldwide in October of 2021, Metroid Dread was the first original 2D Metroid game since Metroid Fusion on Game Boy Advance, and a direct successor to that same 2002 title. While conceived by longtime Metroid director Yoshio Sakamoto for the Nintendo DS, development was later cancelled due to technical limitations at the time, though later resumed under the custody of Mercury Steam. The same studio who developed the Metroid 2 remake for 3DS, Metroid Samus Returns, as well as the recent Lords of Shadow subset of Castlevania games. Despite the several years it spent in the gaming world's development hell, Metroid Dread actually wound up outperforming expectations and living up to the reputation of its franchise's popularity. Metroid Dread sold more units in its first week in Japan than almost any other Metroid title has ever managed, even including lifetime sales. Globally, Dread is already the second highest selling Metroid game of all time, either 2D or 3D, being only 100,000 units behind Metroid Prime as of this video. In the nearly two decades of gaming since we've last seen an original entry in the 2D Metroid timeline, not only has technology broadened the capabilities of Nintendo's hardware, but the Metroidvania genre has drastically increased in popularity since 2002. While several recent indie games have stolen the spotlight with their own contributions in artistry and ingenuity, Nintendo is proving that they won't easily be outdone when it comes to classic action adventures. In order to know how it became such a successful return for the franchise, let's figure out what's so great about Metroid Dread. While not intended to be an outright horror game, Metroid Dread's gameplay certainly was meant to elicit fear, according to producer Yoshio Sakamoto. This fearful approach wasn't a large stretch for the series by any means, with franchise protagonist Samus Aran having many previous run-ins with malicious parasites, shameless pirates, and tight dark spaces with limited equipment. At the start of the game, Metroids themselves, the virulent and all-consuming creatures that have plagued the universe throughout their namesake series, are now known to be extinct. The X-Parasite, a self-replicating life form also introduced in Metroid Fusion, has also, up until this game's events, been believed to be extinct. This parasite's sole predator was the Metroid species, and after being almost entirely destroyed by Samus during the events of Metroid Fusion, the only known remaining X-Parasite has been spotted on the remote planet known as ZDR. Due to this parasite's ability to copy the genetic code of anything around it, this unpredictable life form has now become an even greater threat than the Metroid species. While Samus's mission is a solo operation, as usual, she isn't the only party sent to solve this X-Parasite predicament. The Galactic Federation, the same organization that originally hired Samus to hunt Metroids in the past, has released seven Emmys, or Extraplanetary Multiform Mobile Identifiers, to pursue the X-Parasite. These Emmy robots are made of what is only referred to as the strongest stuff in the universe and have very few vulnerabilities. Unfortunately, all communication with these robots was lost, and upon Samus' arrival to planet ZDR, they determined she is also an invasive life form of this planet and hunt her down when encountered. As with many of Metroid's characters and themes, the Emmy Patrol units are also heavily inspired by prior works of science fiction. The visual design and name are both reminiscent of the main antagonist from 2000's Red Planet, known as Amy, while the material these robots are made of is a reference to the 1988 anime Gunbuster. The Emmys were designed, in a gameplay sense, to be a smarter version of the bare-bones SAX that follows the player in Metroid Fusion. Instead of following a very specific path and turning around at the soonest dead end, Emmy units will pursue Samus without relent, utilizing their advanced AI and movement capabilities to prove a much more efficient and terrifying foe. Luckily, the rules, limits, strengths, and weaknesses of these recurring foes are laid out and explained very clearly, in order to provide a fun and fair challenge. You can immediately tell when you're in an Emmy Patrol Zone due to a dramatic aesthetic shift, including eerie music and a grainy static overlay. As is explained early in the game, as well as even noticeable in the game's box art, there are a finite number of Emmys patrolling the planet, so the player can approximate which sorts of hazards still await them, and how these threats may evolve to keep things interesting throughout the game. The first Emmy you encounter with any individuality would be the Green Emmy, which has the added ability of being able to fit through tight spaces. 
Adam, Samus's AI commander from Metroid Fusion and Metroid Other M, informs you of the fact that enemies are built to adapt to their environments, so it can be assumed that as the player grows stronger, so will the enemies, utilizing features of the Metroid series previously left to Samus alone in order to force the player to come up with more intricate ways of avoiding and defeating them. Overcoming each of the different enemies will often grant Samus a new upgrade related to their ability. This leads returning players to have a pretty good idea of which upgrades they'll be receiving soon based on how each Emmy gets around. For the first time in an original Metroid title, Samus has a melee attack. The developers at Mercury Steam actually worked this feature into the Metroid 2 remake for 3DS, but with its refined appearance and dread, several new opportunities for interesting combat have made their way into the Metroid side-scrollers. Utilizing this close quarters maneuver at just the right moment will allow you to shrug off certain enemy attacks, even Emmys, if timed exactly right. For the added sake of simplicity, Samus will also immediately target a melee disrupted enemy with her arm cannon for quicker means of success. She also comes equipped with a new laser sight that allows for more precise aiming, and players can freely fire with this same precision laser while hanging from a ledge. The game outright tells you in one of its loading screen hints that no enemy attack is unavoidable. Talented players just need to look for the right time to either dodge or counter, similar to waiting for the right moment to strike your opponent in Punch-Out for maximum damage. This brief counter chance, accompanied by a bright flash and a sound effect, is a great way to speed up combat for players who have found their groove. Not only does this defensive maneuver protect the player and generate additional ammunition, but it's fun to find the moment of weakness for any enemy, even bosses, in order to nail the physically and visually pleasing counterattacks. Each skill in Samus' arsenal, whether it has to do with upgrades to her suit, an attack ability, or anything else, can always be referred to later on with example videos and control reminders in the pause menu. This is of great benefit to any player revisiting the game after a long pause, but also simply due to the fact that this 2D Metroid game has roughly the same amount of control opportunities as Metroid Prime, which is pretty overwhelming for old school players considering the most complicated 2D Metroid was controlled with a Super Nintendo controller almost 30 years ago. With all of these buttons that players have to keep track of, at least they added the benefit of a few cool new abilities in Samus' arsenal. With the new Aeon abilities, Samus can navigate obstacles and enemies in new ways using a new energy meter that sort of works like a stamina bar. These new abilities include the Phantom Cloak, turning Samus invisible to her enemies, and the Flash Shift, which serves as a super speed dash. Partnering the long-existing Morph Ball ability with the newly improved Grapple Beam creates an interesting way of revealing late-game passages requiring the player to combine abilities to open shortcuts. Samus can also smoothly transition from her slide into the Morph Ball, creating the smoothest method I've seen in a Metroid game for sneaking through the environment's ducks and tight passageways. The discovery of some of the upgrades hidden throughout the game's world is a lot more dynamic and exciting than any previous Metroid title. Some of these have gameplay-based introductions, such as the path that leads toward the Varya suit being a hurried escape from a room that's collapsing and bursting into fire. This creates interesting threats for the player without even requiring them to fire their weapon, but instead rely on a good eye and quick reflexes to avoid losing too much health while the game makes exploring a bit more intense. While there are almost too many options in terms of where to search for your next objective, there are at least plenty of small cutscenes that indicate that the player is indeed headed in the right direction. Couple this with the very in-depth map system and players shouldn't have much trouble understanding the planet of ZDR as long as they're willing to do a little exploratory wandering on their own. The game's map is so detailed that not only can you tell which rooms you've been in and where to find certain points of interest, but you can even see the exact path you took through an area as well, serving as a bit of a fog of war. While this doesn't reveal collectibles or many other tooltips you may want on the map, it does allow the player to keep track of any walls or other surfaces they may not have searched very thoroughly for secrets. After a few hours in the game, and just as I was lamenting the inability to reach old locations quickly, I went back on an excursion to the game's first area to see which sort of collectibles I could now reach, but instead stumbled across a teleportal device that had been inaccessible until recently. By finding these devices through more thorough investigation, players give themselves a much easier way of completing the game's map and amassing smaller collectibles for the sake of personal enjoyment rather than necessity. 
Interestingly enough, the player experiences the environments of dread in the reverse order of the majority of Metroid adventures. Upon falling further into the depths of planet ZDR than anticipated, Samus begins this adventure among the deep, metallic, and overheated environments at first, before actually working up towards the surface and more natural surroundings. The first water-based environment you come across on your way to Berenia is actually one of the most visually interesting sections of the planet to be experienced in-game. It's actually quite a dramatic shift from how aquatic environments had been presented in previous Metroid titles, regularly featuring murkier visuals and washed-out, lifeless environments. The brightly colored corals and reflective wet surfaces actually create a deceptively peaceful aura. Ferenia is probably one of the least ruinous environments we've had the pleasure of experiencing throughout the years in Metroid. Though ominous, it's still sunny and not completely abandoned or overrun. Some environmental features here and there, such as the churning body of water under the rainy Berenia transport station, are so visually satisfying that they really point out how long it's been since we've seen a Metroid game that really exceeded visual standards for the time. The lighting is fantastic in this game and breaks away from the darker survival horror roots of the franchise's history. The wider camera angles and large-scale environments on Planet ZDR are a new, very welcome feature to the 2D Metroid franchise, finally expanding beyond the reaches of a single pixelated screen. And while credit has to be given to a few other titles like Hollow Knight and the Ori games for demonstrating such pleasing visuals in this genre earlier, it's still nice to see how reputable and enjoyable 2D platformers can be when presented in a high-quality format. Most games to be cancelled, brought back from the dead, and left to aimlessly float through development purgatory often wind up disappointing their audience after a long build-up. Luckily, Metroid Dread has become the fastest-selling Metroid game in Japan, the United States, and the United Kingdom. This is most likely due to the substantial growth in popularity that the franchise saw on GameCube and Wii before going on an unofficial hiatus between mainline titles. As I progressed through this game and ran out of new things to comment on, I found myself more and more passively enjoying the game, and I've noticed that's a common feature among high-quality Metroidvania games. Many modern successes among this genre, to reference Ori and Hollow Knight again, also had this same sensation as players unlocked more abilities and finally felt the extreme freedom and power that their fully realized character provided. The Metroid series, much like The Legend of Zelda, is one of those Nintendo properties that receives so much internal care and attention during development that even though releases may be staggered and chaotic, they always present reliably entertaining and impressive gaming experiences. Metroid Dread continues Nintendo's batting average for high-quality space adventures, as a means of reminding the gaming market why this franchise is good enough to have a whole genre named after its incredible gameplay. That is what's so great about Metroid Dread. Thank you all for joining us on this episode of What's So Great About Gaming, as we observe Samus' newest mission in Metroid Dread. Want to see some bonus content? Maybe support the creation of these videos? If so, check out the What's So Great Discord, Twitch, or Patreon. Links for all of those are in the description. If you want to hear what's great about another game, check out the link to our last episode, Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back, on screen or in the description. And please take the time to subscribe to be involved in the discussions here. Thanks again for watching. Now go play a great game. We'll see you next time.